This is section 25 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Miscellaneous Thoughts and Reflections Read by John Greenman The rule of doing as we would be done by is never less observed than it is in telling others their faults but men intend more to show others that they are free from the fault than to dissuade them from committing it they are so pleased with the prudent shape of an adviser that it raiseth the value they have of themselves whilst they are about it certainly to give advice to a friend either asked or unasked is so far from a fault that it is a duty but if a man love to give advice it is a sure sign that he himself wanteth it a man whilst he is advising putteth his understanding upon tiptoes and is unwilling to bring it down again a weak man had rather be thought to know than know and that maketh him so impatient to be told of a mistake he who will not be the better for other men's faults hath no cure left for his own but he that can probe himself to cure his own faults will seldom need either the surgery of his friends or of his enemies in a corrupted age the putting the world in order would breed confusion a rooted disease must be stroked away rather than kicked away as soon as men have understanding enough to find a fault they have enough to see the danger of mending it desiring to have anything mended is venturing to have it spoiled to know when to let things alone is a high pitch of good sense but a fool hath an eagerness like a monkey in a glass shop to break everything in the handling curing and mending are generally mere words of art not to be relied upon they are set out in bills but the mountbacks only get by them great bashfulness is oftener an effect of pride than of modesty modesty is oftener mistaken than any other virtue wise venturing is the most commendable part of human prudence it is the upper story of prudence whereas perpetual caution is a kind of underground wisdom that doth not care to see the light it is best for great men to shoot over and for lesser men to shoot short men who borrow their opinions can never repay their debts they are beggars by nature and can therefore never get a stock to grow rich upon a man who hath not a distinguishing head is safest by not minding what anybody saith he had better trust to his own opinion than spoil another man's for want of apprehending it it is some kind of scandal not to bear with the faults of an honest man it is not loving honesty enough to allow it distinguishing privileges there are some decent faults which may pretend to be in the lower rank of virtues and surely where honor or gratitude are the motives censure must be a good deal silenced men must be saved in this world by their want of faith a man that getteth care into his thoughts cannot properly be said to trade without a stock care and right thought will produce crops all the year without staying for the seasons a man is to go about his own business as if he had not a friend in the world to help him in it he that relieth upon himself will be oppressed by others with offers of their service all are apt to shrink from those that lean upon them if men would think how often their own words are thrown at their heads they would less often let them go out of their mouths men's words are bullets that their enemies take up and make use of against them a man watches himself best when others watch him too it is as necessary for us to suppress our reason when it offendeth as our mistakes when they expose us in an unreasonable age a man's reason let loose would undo him a wise man will do with his reason as a miser doth with his money hoard it but be very sparing in the expense of it 
a man that should call everything by its right name would hardly pass the streets without being knocked down as a common enemy a man cannot be more in the wrong than to own without distinction the being in the right when a man is very kind or very angry there is no sure god but silence upon that subject a man's understanding is easily shoved out of its place by warm thoughts of any kind we are not so much masters of our heat as to have enough to warm our thoughts and not so much as to set them on fire a great enemy is a great object that inviteth precaution which maketh him less dangerous than a mean one an old man concludeth from his knowing mankind that they know him too and that maketh him very wary on the other hand it must be allowed that a man's being deceived by knaves hath often this ill effect that it maketh him too jealous of honest men the mind like the body is subject to be hurt by everything it taketh for a remedy there are some such very great foreseers that they grow into the vanity of pretending to see where nothing is to be seen he that will see at too great a distance will sometimes mistake a bush for a horse the prospect of a wise man will be bounded a man may so overdo it in looking too far before him that he may stumble the more for it and to conclude he that leaveth nothing to chance will do few things ill but he will do very few things suspicion is rather a virtue than a fault as long as it doth like a dog that watcheth and doth not bite a wise man in trusting another must not rely upon his promise against his nature early suspicion is often an injury and late suspicion is always a folly a wise man will keep his suspicions muzzled but he will keep them awake there can no rules be given to suspicion no more than to love suspicion taketh root and beareth fruit from the moment it is planted suspicion seldom wanteth food to keep it up in health and vigour it feedeth upon everything it seeth and is not curious in its diet suspicion doth not grow up to an injury till it breaketh out when our suspicion of another man is once discovered by him there ought to be an end of all further commerce he that is never suspected is either very much esteemed or very much despised a man's interest is not of sufficient ground to suspect him if his nature doth not concur in it a weak man hath less suspicion than a wise one but when he hath it he is less easily cured the remedies as often increase the disease as they do allay it and a fool valueth himself upon suspecting at a venture many men swallow the being cheated but no man could ever endure to chew it few men would be deceived if their conceit of themselves did not help the skill of those that go about it complaining is a contempt upon one's self it is an ill sign both of a man's head and of his heart a man throweth himself down whilst he complaineth and when a man throweth himself down nobody careth to take him up again content layeth pleasure nay virtue in a slumber with few and faint intermissions it is to the mind like moss to a tree it bindeth it up so as to stop its growth the impudence of a bawd is modesty compared with that of a convert a convert hath so much to do to gain credit that a man is to think well before he changeth men generally state their wants by their fancy and not by their reason the poor young children are whipped and beaten by the old ones who are much more inexcusably impertinent not having things is a more proper expression for a man of sense than his wanting them where sense is wanting everything is wanting a man of sense can hardly want 
but for his friends and children that have none most men let their wishes run away with them they have no mind to stop them in their career the motion is so pleasing to desire what belongeth to another man is misprision of robbery men are commanded not to covet because when they do they are very apt to take a difficulty raiseth the spirits of a great man he hath a mind to wrestle with it and give it a fall a man's mind must be very low if the difficulty doth not make a part of his pleasure the pride of compassing may more than compare with the pleasure of enjoying nothing so ridiculous as a false philosopher and nothing so rare as a true one men take more pains to hide than to mend themselves men's pride as well as their weakness disposeth them to rely upon dreams from their thinking themselves of such importance as to have warning of what is to befall them the enquiry into a dream is another dream it is a piece of arrogance to dare to be drunk because a man showeth himself without a veil the best way to suppose what may come is to remember what is past the best qualification of a prophet is to have a good memory experience maketh more profits than revelation the knowledge that is got without pains is kept without pleasure the struggling for knowledge hath a pleasure in it like that of wrestling with a fine woman extremity is always ill that which is good cannot live a moment with it anybody that is fool enough will be safe in the world and anybody that can be knave enough will be rich in it the generality of the world falleth into an insufficient mean that exposeth them more than an extreme on either side though memory and invention are not upon good terms yet when the first is loaded the other is stifled the memory hath claws by which it holdeth fast but it hath no wings like the invention to enable it to fly some men's memory is like a box where a man should mingle his jewels with his old shoes there ought to be a great difference between the memory and the stomach the last is to admit everything the former should have the faculty of rejecting it is a nice mean between letting the thought languish for want of exercise and tiring it by giving it too much a man may dwell so long upon a thought that it may take him prisoner the hardest thing in the world is to give the thoughts due liberty and yet retain them in due discipline they are libertines that are apt to abuse freedom and do not well know how to bear restraint a man that excels in any one thing has a kind of arbitrary power over all that hear him upon that subject and no man's life is too short to know any one thing perfectly the modern wit is rather to set men out than to make them of any use some men have acted courage who had it not but no man can act wit if nature doth not teach him his part true wit is always revenged upon any false pretender that meddleth with it wit is the only thing that men are willing to think they can ever have enough of there is a happy pitch of ignorance that a man of sense might pray for a man that hath true wit will have honor too not only to adorn but to support it the building up a family is a manufacturer very little above the building a house of cards time and accidents are sure to furnish a blast to blow it down no house wanteth new tiling so often as a family wants repairing the desire of having children is as much the effect of vanity as of good nature we think our children a part of ourselves though as they grow up they might very well undeceive us men love their children not because they are promising plants but because they are theirs they cannot discredit the plant without disparaging the soil out of which it came 
pride in this as in many other things is often mistaken for love as children make a man poor in one sense so in another they enforce care and that begetteth riches love is presently out of breath when it is to go up hill from the children to the parents tis good to have men in awe but dangerous to have them afraid of us the mean is so nice that the hitting upon it is oftener the effect of chance than of skill a degree of fear sharpeneth the excess of it stupefieth it is as scandalous not to fear at some times as it can be to be afraid at others folly begets want and want flattery so that flattery with all its wit is the grandchild of folly were it not for bunglers in the manner of doing it hardly any man would ever find out he was laughed at and yet generally speaking a trowel is a more effectual instrument than a pencil for flattery men generally do so love the taste of flattery their stomach can never be overcharged with it there is a right reverend flattery that hath the precedence of all other kinds of it this mitred flattery is of all others the most exalted it ever groweth in proportion and keepeth pace with power there is a noble stroke of it in the article sent to princess mary from henry the eighth such is his majesty's gracious and divine nature showing mercy to such as repentantly cry and call for the same unquote. forgetting is oftener an aggravation than an excuse the memory will seldom be unmannerly but where it is unkind there needeth little care to polish the understanding if true means were used to strengthen it it will polish itself good manners is such a part of good sense that they cannot be divided but that which a fool calleth good breeding is the most unmannerly thing in the world right good manners require so much sense that there is hardly any such thing in the world good nature is rather acted than practised in the world good nature to others is an inseparable part of justice good will like grace floweth where it listeth men mean so very well to themselves that they forget to mean well to anybody else good sense will allow of some intermitting fevers but then the fit must be short he that can be quite indifferent when he seeth another man injured hath a lukewarm honesty that a wise man will not depend upon he that is not concerned when he seeth an ill thing done to another will not be very eager to do a good one himself there is so much wit necessary to make a skilful hypocrite that the faculty is fallen amongst bunglers who make it ridiculous an injury may more properly be said to be postponed than to be forgiven the memory of it is never so subdued but that it hath always life in it the memory of an enemy admitteth no decay but age could we know what men are most apt to remember we might know what they are most apt to do it is a general fault that we dislike men only for the injuries they do to us and not for those they do to mankind yet it will be hard to give a good reason why a man who hath done a deliberate injury to one will not do it to another the memory and the conscience never did nor never will agree about forgiving injuries nature is second to the memory and religion to the conscience when the seconds fight the latter is generally disarmed a man in a corrupted age must make a secret of his integrity or else he will be looked upon as a common enemy he must engage his friends not to speak of it for he setteth himself for a mark to be ill-used as far as keeping distance is a sign of respect mankind hath a great deal for justice they make up in ceremony what they want in good will to it where the generality are offenders justice 
cometh to be cruelty to love and to be in love with anything are things as differing as good sense and impertinence when we once go beyond bare liking we are in danger of parting with good sense and it is not easy for good sense to get so far as liking when by habit a man cometh to have a bargaining soul its wings are cut so that it can never soar it bindeth reason an apprentice to gain and instead of a director maketh it a drudge the being kind to a liar is abetting a treason against mankind a man is to inform the first magistrate that he may be clapped up lies are embroidered with promises and excuses a known liar should be outlawed in a well-ordered government a man that renounceth truth runneth away from his trial in the world the use of talking is almost lost in the world by the habit of lying a man that doth not tell all the truth ought to be hanged for a clipper half the truth is often as errant a lie as can be made it is the more dexterous but not the less criminal kind of lying names to men of sense are no more than fig leaves to the generality they are thick coverings that hide the nature of things from them fools turn good sense upon its head they take names for things and things only for names it is a general mistake to think the men we like are good for everything and those we do not good for nothing a man who is master of patience is master of everything else he that can tell how to bear in the right place is master of everybody he dealeth with positive is the perfection of coxcomb he is then come to his full growth it showeth men's nature that when they are pampered in any kind they are very apt to play jadish tricks one of the tricks of any creature that is wanton is to kick what is next them everything that doth us good is so apt to do us hurt too that it is a strong argument for men to be quiet if men would think more they would act less the greatest part of the business of the world is the effect of not thinking most men put their reason out to service to their will the master and the man are perpetually falling out a third man will hazard a beating if he goes about to part them nothing hath an uglier look to us than reason when it is not of our side we quarrel so often with it that it maketh us afraid to come near it a man that doth not use his reason is a tame beast a man that abuses it is a wild one it is a self-flattering contradiction that wise men despise the opinions of fools and yet are proud of having their esteem self-love rightly defined is far from being a fault a man that loveth himself right will do everything else right a man who doth not think he is punished when he is blamed is too much hardened to be ever reformed the court of shame hath of late lost much of its jurisdiction it ought by right both to judge in the first instance and to exclude all appeals from it shame is a disease of the last age this seemeth to be cured of it singularity may be good sense at home but it must not go much abroad it is a commendation to be that which a crowd of mistaken fools call singular there can hardly be a severer thing said to a man in this age than that he is like the rest of the world slander would not stick if it had not always something to lay hold of a man who can allow himself the liberty to slander hath the world too much at his mercy but the man that despiseth slander deserveth it speakers in public should take more pains to hold in their invention than to raise it invention is apt to make such sallies that it cannot secure its retreat he that will not make a blot will be pretty sure in his time to give a stroke a patient hearer is a sure speaker 
men are angry when others do not hear them yet they have more reason to be afraid when they do misspending a man's time is a kind of self-homicide it is making life to be of no use truth is not only stifled by ignorance but concealed out of caution or interest so if it had not a root of immortality it must have been long since extinguished the most useful part of wisdom is for a man to give a good guess what others think of him it is a dangerous thing to guess partially and a melancholy thing to guess right nothing would more contribute to make a man wise than to have always an enemy in his view a wise man may have more enemies than a weak one but he will not so much feel the weight of them indeed the being wise doth either make men our friends or discourage them from being our enemies wisdom is only a comparative quality it will not bear a single definition a man hath too little heat or wit or courage if he hath not sometimes more than he should just enough of a good thing is always too little long life giveth more marks to shoot at and therefore old men are less well thought of than those who have not been so long upon the stage other men's memories retain the ill whilst the good things done by an old man easily slip out of them old men have in some degree their reprisals upon younger by making nicer observations upon them by virtue of their experience finis end of miscellaneous thoughts and reflections and end of the complete works of george saville first marquis of halifax read by john greenman